William Penn. Most people know me as the leader of the Quaker colony from Pennsylvania. While this is the truth, there is a lot more to me that I would like to share with you. I was born in London, England on October 14, 1644. My father was the great English Admiral Sir William Penn. Because my father was an Admiral, we had several estates, and I was able to grow up and live in places like the English colony of Ireland and the county of Essex, Essex in England. I was privileged enough to study at Christ Church in Oxford. Through my studies I was introduced to Quakerism by my friend John Locke, who was a student of George Fox. I found Quakerism to my liking. It answered questions that had been in my mind for some time. While I had been brought up in the Church of England, I had always questioned and had disagreements with the teachings of the Church. When I heard that Quakers believed that I, as an individual, could have a direct experience with the Eternal Christ, I was convinced that Quakerism must be my chosen path. Of course, Quaker wasn't the first choice of name. We preferred to call ourselves Friends of the Truth. It was our adversaries that called us the Quakers, and it was in order to make fun of us. But we did adopt the term as an acceptable name. As I became more involved in the Friends of Truth, I became more and more troubled with the rituals and teachings of the Church of England. I truly hated wearing the robes required by the Church, and often tore the robes off my classmates out of protest. Eventually, this got me removed from the university, which sat well with me. My father, however, was upset with my actions and turned me away from his home after he beat me. Soon my father had a change of heart, though, and I was allowed back into his presence. Upon my arrival, he sent me on my travels. I think that he had hoped that I may have a change of heart through my travels and my experiences. This was not the case. I did become more refined, but I also remained very devout in my beliefs. My beliefs and religious practices divided my father and I once again when I refused to remove my hat. I wouldn't remove my hat for, even for the king, or the Duke of York, or even my own father, neither would I ever bow to any man. You see, I believe that no man is greater than another, and only the Christ, or God himself, can require me to do such things. And once again my father turned me away. But this upset my mother, and she interceded on my behalf, and I was once again allowed back into the family. My father tried to use his influence to protect me as I practiced my Quakerism beliefs. You see, attending, to, attending the meetings for Quakers was considered illegal in England, and I risked being imprisoned every time I did, uh, did so. My father could not always protect me, as I was thrown into the tower in 1668 for my attack on the doctrine of the Trinity taught by the Church of England. I had published an article titled The Soundy Foundations, this article scared the religious leadership of the church so much that they had me imprisoned. While imprisoned, I continued to write and was eventually freed because of the graciousness of God and the help from the Duke of York. In 1670, my father died, and I inherited his estate. The church had openly hoped that this would help silence me, but this was not so. I was once again imprisoned in 1671 for preaching in public. At trial, I refused to take an oath and was sent to Newgate Prison for six months. Upon my being set free, I traveled to Holland and Germany as a missionary, spreading the message of Quakerism, which was well received by many. I married in 1672 to the daughter of Sir William Springett, and she became my wife. Because of my marriage, I was afforded the chance to continue my preaching and writing. Over time, I had acquired land in part of New Jersey, located in the New World. As I attempted to collect the monies for my claim, I was instead offered a grant of a much larger piece of land to settle. I agreed. I had hoped to call the land Sylvania, but King Charles insisted that it be called Pennsylvania instead. I was a bit troubled by this, but agreed. The king claimed it was in order to honor my father. I feared that it was just, in, just a way for him to make fun of me. Many will say that my only purpose was to establish a safe place for my Quaker brothers and sisters, but this was not so. My true goal was to establish a government adapted to my views and principles. I wanted a civil society of men enjoying the highest possible degree of freedom and happiness. 
Any and all Christian religions were free to practice. This brought people from all over Europe to Pennsylvania, and the area grew quickly. Upon my arrival in the New World, I was well received by the other settlers. I was concerned about the people native to the land. I wanted to ensure good relations with them. I felt the need to establish laws to protect them. I studied and learned many English Indian dialects so that I may converse with them freely during our negotiations. I assured the natives that they would not that they would be paid fairly for the land and that any European that did the native wrong would be put to trial. In order to ensure a fair trial, I agreed that half of the jurors would be selected from each group. I worked very hard to secure a treaty with the natives. We gathered under an elm tree and came to an agreement. We would pay the natives 1,200 pounds for their land, which we both agreed to be a fair price. During my stay, I developed the plan for the city of Philadelphia, which many considered to be a most majestic city. I worked diligently to establish a representative form of government that assured that all had rights. I remained in America for two years and governed my colony in a most benevolent manner. I returned to my home in England and petitioned the king to end the persecution of my brethren, and in 1686 my friend King James II issued a proclamation calling for all those imprisoned for religious beliefs to be freed. More than 1,200 of my brethren were freed at this time. Following the session of King James II, I was accused of treason multiple times and acquitted each time. I returned to the New World in 1699 and found the conditions of Pennsylvania to be to my liking. Upon my return to England, I learned that I had been betrayed by a friend and was imprisoned because of my debts. I was freed by the good graces of God and my friends. William Penn died in Berkshire on July 30, 1718, his health having been severely affected by his last imprisonment.